Hi, I'm Robbie Firestone, owner of Santa Fe Art Classes, and I'm so glad you're here. In this video, we're going to go over what supplies you need or don't need for these classes. In other words, an exercise in use what you got. So let's start with your paint. You would think you need painting class, paint for a painting class. I use acrylic paint in these classes. It is on a disposable paper plate, right? I actually prefer the unbleached ones, the ones that are neutral colored, that are recycled. I just happen to have this one today. So you need a paper plate, right? Or if you don't have a paper plate or disposable plate, use a dinner plate. That is perfectly fine, okay? Um, it's generally non-toxic, generally. Acrylics can be washed right off a dinner plate, so you just don't even have to worry. So if you do not have paints, what do you do? Well, let me show you. I got tons of cool art supplies. So for example, perhaps you have crayons. Now these are giant oil pastel, uh, oil paint crayons, which aren't real crayons, but if you've got crayons, use crayons, right? I've got this incredible, luscious, yummy assortment of artist crayons. You can use regular crayons. What if you don't have crayons? Sharpies, pens, pencils. You can use your dad's whiteout out of his desk if he says it's okay. Don't do it if he does not say it's okay. You can ask mom if you can use her nail polish for a little bit of red, right? Painting shirt. Don't do that to your shirt, by the way, kids. I have charcoals which can be substituted for just regular pencil, right? So there's some charcoals. You've got pencils, you've got pens. Oh, I have this luscious assortment of yummy pens. I love these Artesia pens. You can't really see so much the colors, but regular colored pencils, colored pens. Oh. I forgot to mention, oh, that's canvas, so we'll talk about that later. Oh, and you can also, if you don't have paints, use pastels, for example. I've got these wonderful pastels. They're so delicious. Look at that color. Oh, I love it. Oh, that side's the camera. Um, couldn't really see that one. So use what you got. We're making art. You don't need any particular supplies. You just get creative. I am just lucky because I'm an artist and I got all these cool, yummy supplies like my wonderful acrylic paint. So paint, we've got our plate. We've got, oh, your brushes. So I prefer in these classes to use three sizes of brushes. You can see there's an eensy teensy tiny one, right? That one's for what I use the coloring book. That's the coloring book tech paint, painting technique, or we put dots and connect the dots, right? So that's the one I like the most for that. Then we've got a huge, oh, fabulous, big O brush, an awesome big brush that I love, 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 love. That's super fun for doing big spaces and watercolor technique and all kinds of stuff. And then I've just got a middle size brush. Now, brushes are like cars in real life. So you may be a Chevy truck driver and you absolutely love your Chevy truck, but you're probably not gonna drag car race in that. Or you may have an Audi convertible and you love it for putting the top down and going for a cruise. You know, there are different tools. They're the same vehicle that'll get you from A to B, but it's a completely different sensation and practicality, right? You're not gonna move your grandmother's rocking chair in the back of your Audi convertible, but boy, if you got a Chevy pickup truck, that is awesome for that, right? And all kinds of other things. So, I was raised in rural Missouri, so I'm thinking rodeo now, woo! All right, so, paint brushes. If you only have two, then only use two. You can make art with anyone, anything, right? You can make it with dirt. You can make these paintings using coffee grounds or spilling red wine. 
There's so many different ways to make art, so I just don't want you to feel limited, okay? So those are your paint brushes. Oh, we need our beautiful paper towel. So I take a square, a, a rectangle, and double it, right? I like more absorbency, so that's why the two layers. This is really important, by the way, so you really want to get your paper towels and have some extras in case you get a little splotch on the floor or something like that. Don't wipe it across your shirt like I do. <laughs> I keep my very, very, so you know those, those things that you really should have gotten rid of a long time ago, like your high school t-shirt or something like that that's just sitting in the drawer? Use it for your painting shirt because in, every time you put it on, it's so filled with love and creativity and excitement. So my favorite clothes, this is actually my favorite auntie's shirt. Don't tell the other aunties, although they know and I love them too. Um, so this is her shirt. She's also a painter and dubbed me the art whisperer, Jean Opperman, a crazy, amazing figurative painter. I love her dearly and she inspired me to be an artist. So this is hers and I have one of my other painting shirts is this fabulous linen, gorgeous shirt that I bought in Florence that got a bleach stain on it and I decided well it's a gorgeous shirt I'm just gonna make it into my painting shirt so use something to paint in that feels fabulous okay all right da, da, da. oh I like to have two cups of water because if I'm feeling really creative and one gets quite dirty and opaque then I can switch it out to a second one okay without disturbing my creative process so that's two cups of water and use mugs right you don't need plastic cups I actually prefer not to have plastic cups um, I've been using those same plastic cups for probably a year and then last but not least oh an easel you do not need an easel at all at all you can just prop your your canvas or your paper or whatever you're using up against a stack of books in front of you or you can hold it in your lap just make sure that you have pants that can get painty as well because if you hold it in your lap you're definitely gonna get painting on on your pants and then okay let's talk about the canvas this amazing canvas right I love this little canvas board a lot of people don't have canvases at home, so at the grocery store, you can buy poster board. Now, poster board, this is an 11 by 14, which is my favorite, um, favorite size on which to paint for classes. Um, yet, regular paper, whoop, regular paper, paper works out beautifully as well. Okay, it's just a little bit of technique difference, but you don't have to worry about it. So for these paintings, you can use anything. And let me talk to you about this wonderful canvas. It is scary and empty and interesting. And just know that just like going to a new neighborhood, going to a new town, there's just this little bit of anxiety that bubbles up if you're going to a new place, right? If you're on your bike and you're going to a new neighborhood or meeting a new friend, it's always a little bit scary, right? So when you see this white canvas, it's not a fear of making art or an anxiety of being an artist. It's just the unfamiliar, okay? I still get a little nervous every time I see a white canvas and I have been doing this since I was 13 years old, which was a long time ago. I got a little makeup on there. Look, you can even paint with makeup. How about that? Crazy! So, this concludes your lesson or your instructions on what supplies you must have for this class, which basically means make art out of anything book a class just book it right now there's a price point that absolutely meets you and now you know who i am and this is the way i teach classes so i do hope that you will go and explore all the offerings on this website opt in to find out more and i will see you at your first class i'm so grateful you are here because it allows me to do what i love to do every single day of my life. So thank you. Here's to your creativity, 
Go gather your supplies. There's a list on this page. Do it. Mwah. See you next video. The one where you're painting. I'm excited. Bye.